Whoa, how long you been there? Have I been waiting for you or have you been waiting for me? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It is June 28th, which means tomorrow is my live streaming event. I go on live every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When you hear the market bell going off, I'm going on. Me and my co-host were there for about an hour for one reason, to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. So if you got a ticker you want us to take a look at, drop it in the comments. I'll go through the information, we'll look at the charts, we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth to you. Now we're only there for an hour, so it is first come, first served. I can't spend as much time on each stock there, but I gotta spend enough to make it worth your while, right? So four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'll be looking for you. So what we do on this show is we look at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I determine potential by looking at the charts. I'm looking for charts that have heat first. Then I go looking for the catalyst. Well, I got a few of those sort of stocks to share with you today. All right, let's get this party started. First stock we're taking a look at is SMC Entertainment ticker SMCE. I do believe we've already looked at this once on July 13th. She had a nice run. She came back down to her 200 and she's sitting there right now. And the news, it's hot. It just keeps getting hotter. They're building up all of this momentum towards a specific goal that I think is going to make them a ton of money. So SMCE, she finished today at a real low price today, 0013. She is up six and a half percent. On the pink tier, current, and she's got those two green ticks we're always looking for, the verified profile and the transfer agent verified. Why are these important? Because there's a lot of information being represented by these two simple ticks that was validated behind the scenes. And if you're gonna be getting into a pink, pinks don't have a lot of validated information. Most of them only get disclosures. We don't even get a CPA to look at the numbers. So whenever you can get validated information, you're ahead of the game. So what does SMC Entertainment do? Well, they don't do entertainment. SMC is a versatile holdings company focused on acquisition and support of proven commercialized financial services and technology. They're a fintech company, which means they're working online, moving money in some way. And we'll see how they're moving that money by looking at the news. So what was the relative volume on the company today? Ooh, not good, huge drop. Now her volume's been low for a while, I will grant you that. It fell from 9.4 million down to 2.6 million. Share structure for SMC, it's not great. Our outstanding share count is at 1.1 billion. Looks like maybe our float is about 458 million, just under a half a billion. Financials for the company. Well, they don't show anything over here. So I went and jumped into their most recent financial that just came out. Matter of fact, this is an important one because it is a 10. It is a form 10. They have been using disclosures. Filing the first 10 is a big deal. It means they're gonna get in the habit of doing this now and we'll have more information. So total current assets, we don't add any zeros here, is uh, $308,000. Total liabilities is 2.6 million. So they are definitely a startup company. And I did scroll down here, they aren't making any money yet. None at all, so this news that we're gonna be looking at is a big deal. Disclosures for the company. There's that 10-12G. This is their very first one they have filed. It's a big deal. This means that they are now getting in line with proper accounting. We're gonna get more information. The SEC is gonna get more information. It just puts them in a better boat. All right, let's go take a look at that news. Oh, we got lots of big juicy news over here. It's building up momentum all towards the ultimate goal of getting this company a broker online where they can sell their new innovative electronic equities like ETFs and stuff. Folks, this is huge, huge money. So I've scrolled back here to February of this year. The company, they're renegotiating a deal they had with Genesis Financial. Now, I don't know when they made this deal. I don't know what the deal originally was, but I know what it is now. The company is granting Genesis 10% equity for $3 million. So if they're getting 10% of the company for 3 million bucks, that means the company's worth $30 million. 
Yes and no. They tell us it's worth $30 million after the completion of another acquisition. The company recently announced a letter of intent to acquire AI-enabled wealth management technology platform provider. And we'll take a look at that news here in just a minute. Now, the next two pieces of news are critical. SMC signs letter of intent to acquire stake in SEC registered and FINRA regulated broker dealer. This is the brokerage firm and it is SEC registered and FINRA regulated prime location. You can't sell your products unless you have a storefront. So that is perfect for them. Now here's that deal we were talking about. This is in April. I'll just jump on into this piece of news. April 18th, this came out. The company has executed a stock purchase agreement acquiring 100% Affinity Global Equities EBT. Affinity is a fintech developer and a provider of technology that combines artificial intelligence, machine learning, driven quantitative investing with AI enabled wealth management, electronic block trading technology. Whoa, what a title. EBT is focused on democratizing basket trading, direct indexing, tax loss, harvesting, and more. Finity's IQ engine is an AI-driven contextual analyzer that creates a repository, a library of all equity research. It keeps all the information it acquires. How much can an AI acquire? More than we'll ever know. And the acquisition is worth $25 million. So if they say the company's worth $30 million, well, there's $25 million of it right there. And those last two pieces of news, we have their financials. Now, we know they didn't make any money, but down here, they give us some interesting information. The markets they're tapping into, how big are they? They're gigantic. Those ETFs I had mentioned. ETFs are an $8 trillion market annually worldwide. Platform market is roughly $1.2 trillion worldwide, and the EBT market is targeted to generate $6.2 billion in fees. This is a huge opportunity for them. Those are huge markets. Tap into those and even get a small slice, and you've got a lot. And that last piece of news about them filing that 10 form. The reason this is important is because now we're going to get more information. They're going to be filing 8Ks. I love those 8Ks. 10Ks, 10Qs give you a lot of information they can't avoid. It makes them more transparent, and this is the only way you can uplist. So everything looks really good for the company, including that chart. Let's go take a look at that. Let's scope out ticker SMCE, and we're going to do our scoping using Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. You get it when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So this is a six-month, four-hour view. We got our low bubble back here of 001, and we hit a high here of 0046. These were some huge rips. This is about 250%. That one there from 001 to 0046 is 460%. You can see our 200 day SMA was coming down steep here. She had some good, strong, intentional climbs, but she couldn't get on top of that yet. She just slide downhill and fall. So she just cracked the ice and came back down to home. But here when it got flat, she decided to get on top of the 200, ran almost 100%, and now she's fallen back, and she is right up underneath that 200. Now, I'm going to throw a regression channel on here to give you one other perspective on what it is we're looking at. Let's see. And, yeah, all right, that'll show you there. We are right up underneath the 200, and we are up underneath the channel. Yeah, that is a weak position, but she looks like she's turning up right now. This would be a perfect buy-in position at the low before she comes up. Now, I can't promise that's going to happen. Volume has been low. We haven't had a whole lot of volume here recently, and all of our oscillators are low right now. The only thing we can say is we have our RSI starting to climb, and the RSI only climbs when the price is climbing. Jump on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So we got a low bubble here of 0012 on top of the 200, hit a high of 0028. That's a 150% run. And then we cut through every single SMA, including the 200. And right now she is underneath that channel. As I said, starting to turn up, just starting. Our PPO is just starting to turn around like that and our ADX is falling down. When you get that blue line going up and your ADX going down like a V and they're spreading, guaranteed your price is climbing. 
Our MACD, we just had a crossover. It's tough to see, but she is on top, just now starting to push up. And our RSI is at a very low, 39. Five day, five minute view, not pretty. She has been falling. She has a high here of 0019 and a low of 0012. We are currently at 0013. You can see she had that drop here. She's come up. And all I can say is she was hitting her head on the 20 day SMA here, the orange one. She got through it a couple times. We had a tap there on the 50, but the 50 is pretty steep. Get up on top of it, you're going to fall. There's another intentional jump. I want to climb, it's just too steep. It looks like the 50 day is finally flattening out. And this would have a chance to get on top of the 20 and jump up onto the 50 where she'll get her steroid pill and probably able to make a run for the 200. Osculators are looking a lot better. We got a crossover on our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, which you read the same as the MACD. That's already had a crossover and our green bars are accumulating. RSI has come up, but it's still at 45, which is very cool. And that is it. That's five minutes. I was going to go down to the one minute. No, this is it. I think she's going to turn around myself, folks. I think the news is big enough. And when they get another piece of news, it just opens up our view even more. I think this is in a prime position to start to run. So I would put SMCE on my watch list. And volume is what we're looking for. We get that volume. We could get the breakout over to 50. Over the 50 is where I expect it to start to jump. Shame, shame, shame on me. I should have shared this stock with you three days ago when I first saw it. It impressed me and I tweeted about it. Yesterday I looked at it again, it impressed me again. So I tweeted about it and today I looked at it, oh my God, it impressed me some more. Yes, I tweeted about it, but I didn't share it with you. So now I'm sharing it with you. Hopefully we're not too late. The chart is impressive. This is VTECF Vortex Energy Core. And that's what it's all about. This chart, they came on the market May 31st and haven't had a down day since. It has been on the eternal run ever since. Every day it is growing. Not by leaps and bounds, just steady growth. She started off at 45 cents and right now we're at $1.70. I like this chart and she's got brilliant catalysts. Believe it or not, this is a mining company, but they do a lot more than mining. At least they tell us they're going to. They work with salt mines. These huge salt mines, they go in and they cut these huge caverns out and they're gonna use these caverns to store hydrogen. This is a whole new sector storing hydrogen in safe ways. So they've got a hot catalyst and they've got a hot chart. So VTECF, she finished today at $1.70 with almost 33% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, got those two green ticks we're always looking for, and she's got independent directors to boot. Now you know what they're good for? I don't either. The only thing I do know they're good for is uplisting. You don't need independent directors unless you're going to uplist. So maybe they have plans. So I've already told you what this company does. Let's take a look at that relative volume. It increased nicely today, going from 143,000 to 1.3 million. Share structure for Vortex, not bad at all. Outstanding share count is 62, 63 million. Restricted shares, what the insiders own, 41 million. They got the lion's share and they're leaving us with about 21 million. That's not a bad float at all. Financials for the company, well, they're nil. The company's just gotten here. They're not in business yet. They're not making any money. They've just got a lot of hot news. Disclosures, we got nothing. There's nothing here, no financials, no SEC filings. All we have is that hot news. So let's go check that out. For not being on the market very long, they sure do have a lot of news. Matter of fact, I found another piece of news that isn't here. It came out in April. This piece of property, River Salt Project in Newfoundland, they had to acquire this and they did it by buying out another company, Blue Ocean Salt. Now, here in May, they start investigating it, surveying it, and they go out and hire this company called Respect. Now, Respect's been around since 1969 and everybody 
respects respect they work in 14 states 50 different countries and when it comes to geology surveying they do it all and that's who the company is working with them to survey these salt mines then they have an interesting piece of news that comes out may 19th the company congratulates their neighbor world energy gh2 for receiving an international investment of 50 million dollars gh2 isn't just a neighbor they're a competitor they do the same sort of thing that this company is doing. But Vortex sees past that competition. They actually believe that they can, in the future, end up working with this other company. Then they get a completed seismic interpretation of those mines, of all that salt, and they've identified at least two salt structures suitable for hydrogen storage. Then Vortex unveils a 3D geology model of the Robinson River Salt Dome property, showing everybody their proof, where they're going to put it. And then Vortex Energy announces an extension of their marketing campaign. That little red thing right there, they are marketing right now, and they are going to pay half a million dollars to continue their marketing. Now, this isn't a pump and dump. It's not scamming. It's just advertising, right? Everybody likes to advertise, but you can't lie. And that's the big thing about advertising your stocks. You have to monitor what everybody is saying and doing because you are held liable. So there's a lot going on here. And for God's sake, the stock just won't quit running. It is the eternal surge. It is, I'm going to say it, a wet dream. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Isn't that a hot chart? Psst. Oh my God. This is ticker VTECF. That is a one hour, 20 day chart. This goes all the way back to the very first day she was on the market, May 31st. She hit her low that day, 45 cents, and she hit her high today of $1.75. And as you can see, she has not had a down day since she'd been on the market for virtually a month. The worst she had was some sideways activity here, and that was it. And she has been floating on that nine-day SMA the entire time. Not even, she got close to the 20 here, but she did not touch it. And right now, she is gaining momentum and starting to go parabolic. And look at that volume, folks. From nothing to a whole heap. As the price increases, so is our volume. Oscillators are all on fire. PPO and MACD are climbing. Our RSI is on fire right now. Everything looks sweet. Now look at this five day, five minute chart. You can see another habit she has, not just climbing, but bouncing first thing in the morning. She gets these huge runs very first thing in the morning, and this is an OTC stock, so there should be virtually no trading before or after market. If there is, it's not me and you, it's marketers and brokers behind the scene. And it seems to be after she jumps, she climbs a little more. And if it's a bigger jump, she climbs a little more. And if it's a big jump, she really starts to push. And look at that 50-day SMA. Where is she bouncing? Right on that 50. Total respect. And look at the bends in that 50. This is a very tight relationship right here. And she is on the 50 right now. This is the most red we've ever seen. But the volume is getting thick. I would keep my eye on VTCEF. She's got everything going for her right now. Hot news, hot chart. No, she's not making any revenues, but she's got volume. And that's what we're playing. We're playing the charts with volume. This is loaded up right now. VTECF might make you some money if you put it on your watch list. Sad to say, all good things must come to an end. And this is the last stock we're going to take a look at. <laughs> This is GNPX, Genprex Inc. And of course, I found the stock by looking at the charts. First, she is set up for a breakout. Right up underneath that 200 volume coming in. And it's been a volatile fall. She's had some big bounces, giving away 80 to 100%. And today, she had some huge news. And the problem is, is I don't know how much impact it's going to have. So when I compare her news to other companies who've had news like hers, it could be explosive. GNPX, she finished a day at roughly 79 cents and almost 6.5% gains. And hey, she's a penny stock on the NASDAQ, so you can trade her pre-market after market. So what does Genprex do? Genprex is a clinical stage gene therapy company developing potentially life-changing technologies for patients with cancer and diabetes. 
This is a research and development company. They're not making any money right now. They're looking for that miracle drug. So what was the relative volume around this big news today? Huge. <laughs> we got over 20 times her regular volume, going from 300,000 to 7.3 million. A lot of attention being paid to this huge news. Share structure for the company. No clue what the float is. Well, that's not exactly true. I do have a clue. It's less than 51.9 million, the outstanding share count. Financials for the company, well, I just told you, they're research and development. They don't have any products on the market yet, so they're not making any money yet. Disclosures. We do have a recent 8K here. They had a stockholder meeting, and they're letting you know how that vote went. I didn't see anything too important in there, but hey, don't trust me. Do your own due diligence. All right, let's go take a look at this huge news. We only need to look at one piece of news here, the catalyst. When we're looking at research and development, biotechs, biopharmacies that aren't making any money, the old news really isn't coming into play anymore and the charts are normally pretty cool. The only time you see any heat in the chart is when they have news come out about top line results in a phase trial or something like that. Well, that's what we got going on here. The thing is, you never know how far one of these can fly. I mean, it's tough to put a price on a medication. Who knows what that's worth? Well, the other day we had a prime example of one running far beyond what anyone thought. Look at the end of the headline for our news here. For the treatment of small cell lung cancer. Now look at a piece of news from BDTX that came out on the 27th. Black Diamond Therapeutics announces they have a drug for non-small cell lung cancer. Why am I showing it to you? Well, look, it jumped 79% that day. But look what it's done since then. She was down here at uh, $1.86. She ran all the way up to $6.22. She has fallen back currently at $5.35. And today, she was given a price target of $11. That's probably going to help push this some more. And that's what I'm saying. You never know how far one of these can run. Now, this is the actual news itself. They tell us here that Genprex Inc. announced that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has granted fast-track designation for the company's lead drug candidate, Recorsa Immunogene Therapy, in combination with Gentex Tencentric in patients with extensive stage small cell lung cancer. Now, fast-track is great. This is what they get when there's not drugs on the market to help what their drug can help. So they move it along faster. So you get end results a lot quicker. Everybody loves fast track. So we don't know how big this is going to bounce. It's the same sort of news, right? We're working with lung cancer. We are both of those companies are in phase one trials moving into phase two. But the chart looks hot right now and it could give us more. Let's go take a look at that. Well, yee-haw, we're getting some price activity on that there chart after market hours. I knew we would. This news has been a magnet for volume for this company all day. And the company needs some volume. They haven't had much here recently. So we are looking at GNPX. That is a six-month, four-hour chart. As you can see, she has been falling downhill all this time with a lot of volatility. She hit a high here in February of $2.14 and she hit a low of $0.72 cents in May. Now take notice, when you see a lot of volume, you see a lot of price action. Well, right now we are coming into a lot of volume. It has been dry for quite a while. She has been falling for quite a while and there's no doubt she has changed her trend. We got a solid spike going through our 200, clear up here. She started off down here at about $0.74 cents and went to $0.96. Cents. Yeah, she did fall back, but she fell back to a nice position. She's on top of her nine day and on top of her 20 when she was underneath everything yesterday. And that spike right there to me is an intentional spike. That's a finger telling me that's where I'm going to go. I need to break the ice before I can climb through. Oscillators, well, they were in bad shape after all that fall, but right now you can see everything has changed direction. They are in recovery. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. We had a solid bounce off of that 200 right there. Hit a high here of $1.07, and then it fell. But look, before she fell, we had a spike. From way up here, she stabbed the 200. 
Now, there is a long ways to go before she starts falling. That, to me, was an intentional spike. I expect it now to go under the 200, just like the green spike there. I expect it to climb. The exact same thing going on. So when this came, she got there, she fell, just like she said she wanted to, all the way down. Now she's had a big poke. She's come down. Look at our green spike aftermarket. I told you I saw some activity here. She was falling, and now she's starting to bounce. Looks like she may have been waiting for the 50-day SMA. It didn't quite hit the 50. It's actually bouncing on the 20 right now. Oscillators are looking better here, but they are still in recovery. Five-day, five-minute. Woo, what a swoop. That's a toboggan ride there. And then you hit the parking lot and you slide forward. And look at that. As soon as it got close, perfect timing, it launched. Launching there, like I said, from 74 up to 96 pre-market. She opened up a lot lower. She was way down here and pretty much went sideways. And look, she's been going sideways for a reason. She's been waiting for the 200. She's already had the 50. So if she's not paying homage to the 50, it's got to be the next guy. Well, here's the next guy. He's here. So I think there's going to be some bouncing going on here like that. And then it's going to push up onto the 50 and get some balls, and it's going to take off again. That's just my feeling. Do your own due diligence, folks. But all the stocks we covered have got something to give you. The charts are looking good. They've got catalysts, but more due diligence never hurts. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.